Hello everyone, I am Jolanta Szenaj from the Military Institute of Medicine in Warsaw, Poland. I would like to thank organizers for inviting me to present our results during this webinar. Today, I will tell you about the transcript remodeling during the drug resistance development in ovarian cancer cells and how we unexpectedly found that osteogenesis and chondrogenesis associated genes might be involved in this process. The aims of our study were as follows. Creation of a model of isogenic human ovarian cancer cell lines with gradually developed resistance to paclitaxel. Analysis of trends in gene expression in order to find out a scaffold of resistance acquisition process. And finally, look at the mechanism of resistance acquirement as an evolution event. Drug resistance is a phylogenetically old and universal phenomenon, from bacteria resistant to antibiotics to human drug resistant cancers. In the clinic, the acquirement of resistance is, more or less, is almost inevitable. This is like never-ending arms race between evolution and contemporary medicine. A standard chemotherapy of ovarian cancer is based on platinum derivatives alone or combined with taxans. Resistance acquirement remains a major obstacle in the therapy. When cancer cells are treated with one drug, the development of cross-resistance or collateral sensitivity to other drugs is likely outcome. This occurs as a bystander effect and, as for now, we are not able to predict and control the course of these events. The acquiring on inverse resistance between platinum derivatives and taxons is the dominant trend in different types of cancers, both in vitro and in the clinic. We used A2780 cell line as a parental cell line to develop a series of drug-resistant sublines. We continuously exposed cells to stepwise increasing concentrations of paclitaxel. For further studies, we chose cell sublines with stable tolerance against 4, 8, 60, 32, 64, and 128 nanomolar concentrations of paclitaxel. These are the number of days which cells needed uh, to reach the stable growth in the given concentration of paclitaxel. Then we determined IC50 values and resistance index and sensitive index for paclitaxel and cisplatin in A2780 parental cell line and six derivatives. It turned out that we generated a series of cell lines with gradually increasing resistance to paclitaxel and collaterally developed gradually decreasing resistance to paclitaxel, to cisplatin. Therefore, we provided a model of inverse resistance being in line with the most common clinical response to taxans and platinum derivatives. The resistance index for paclitaxel in A4 PTX subline 2.48 can be considered as clinically relevant since 2 to 4 to 3 fold resistance is typically developed in patients after chemotherapy. In consecutive 5 sublines, the level of resistance to paclitaxel achieved from several to several dozen fold. This is so called high level laboratory model and we could expect that these cells would exhibit a stable resistance and provide a large number of molecular changes for transcriptome analysis. 
The growth response curves show the gradually increasing resistance to paclitaxel from black A2780 curve through blue A4 PTX curve, yellow 8 PTX, red 60 PTX, green 32 PTX, orange 64 PTX and purple 128 PTX curve. You can easily notice that the order of colored curves is opposite on the chart for cisplatin. Briefly summarizing, we generated a series of isogenic ovarian cancer cell lines with gradually developed inverse resistance between paclitaxel and cisplatin. By next generation sequencing, we detected more than 11,500 genes in A2780 cell line and six sublines. The pairwise comparison between parental cell line and six derivatives allowed us to identify among them uh, uh, 5,810 differentially expressed genes with Q value less than 0.05. In this set of genes, we distinguish more significant genes, almost 3,000, with Q value less than 0.01. And in this subset, we distinguish more significant genes, almost 1,000, with Q value less than 0.001. And finally, we focused on 160 genes from this set uh, with more than fourfold change in their expression. Already, these preliminary results revealed how deeply cells needed to rearrange their gene expression to acquire drug resistance. Almost a half of all detected genes significantly alter their expression. We analyzed the correlation between resistance and, sen resistance and sensitivity indexes and the numbers of differentially expressed genes. With a Q value less than 0.05 and less than 0.01. The graph depicts that when the level of inverse resistance was rising, the more differences were observed in gene expression. The strand is clearly visible, especially for these four cell lines. The observation suggests the evolutionary character of resistance developed process. Principal component analysis was performed with the use of uh, 997 the most significant genes with Q value less than 0.001. Three principal components, PC1, PC2 and PC3, evidently separated seven studied cell lines only on the basis of their gene expression signature. And you can see, for example, that parental cell lines evidently differs from other cell lines and that for these two sublines for PTX and 8 PTX are more similar to each other than to other sublines. Next we performed the unsupervised hierarchical clustering on on 160 differentially expressed genes with Q value less than 0.01 and with more than fourfold changes in their expression. Six sublines were separated into two classes A4PTX and A8PTX sublines at early stages of, one, of uh, resistance development is the first class and A42 PTX, A64 
PTX and A128 PTX sublines uh, for, form the second classes at the advanced stage of resistance development. The A16 PTX cell subline plays, played a role of bond between these two classes. This picture confirms the evolutionary character of resistance develop, development process. The heat map revealed five expression patterns of genes. Consistently up-regulated and consistently down-regulated genes, they are in prevalent majority. We also found genes with rising trend in their expression and the gene with descending trend in its expression, together 11 genes, and also one gene with variable expression. Genes with consistently or regularly changing expression constitute a scaffold of gradually developing resistance. We build a protein-protein interaction networks of proteins encoded by scaffold genes. Blue nodes represent proteins encoded by down-regulated genes. Red nodes, proteins encoded by up-regulated genes. Silver nodes, proteins encoded by genes with variable expression. Node size reflects the number of interactions with partners. And hubs are nodes with the greatest numbers of interactions in the network, like SOX9, RANKS2, MIF2C, Taiwan. Color spread charts uh, around nodes uh, depicts the biological process for which networks are enriched. For better visualization, only three processes are depicted. Dark green ossification, light green chondrogenesis, and yellow cell adhesion. Interestingly, we have noticed that genes encoding proteins, which are positive regulators of osteo and chondrogenesis are prevalently down-regulated. And in opposite, genes encoding negative regulators of this process were up-regulated. Two main hubs in the network, negatively regulated, SOX9 and RANX2, are evolutionarily old transcription factors so-called master transcriptional regulators, because they govern the fate of multipotent mesenchymal stem cells. The SOX9 commits mesenchymal stem cells to cartilage-forming chondroblast lineage, whereas RANX to bone-forming osteogenic lineage. The other transcription factors, MIF2C and DLX5, enhance the expression of RANX2. Taiwan also plays a key role in the fate decision of mesenchymal stem cells. It inhibits the adipogenesis and promotes osteogenesis, supporting RANX2 expression. Hordin acts as an antagonist of bone morphogenetic protein BMP signaling pathway which is strongly involved in bone and cartilage development. IGFBP3, independently of its primary role of insulin growth factor carrier, inhibits the growth of chondroprogenitors by inducing mesenchymal stem cells apoptosis. In silico transcriptome analysis revealed the massive turning off of osteo and chondrogenesis associated genes during development of inverse resistance between paclitaxel and cisplatin. The striking observation 
brought to our minds the opposite phenomenon, osteomimicry. Osteomimicry is the ability of tumor cells to exhibit a gene expression profile that resembles the profile of resident bone cells, osteoblast and osteoclast. Osteomimicry facilitate cancer cells to survive and invade the foreign environment. Until this time, osteomimicry has been associated with the tendency of breast and prostate cancer cells to metastasize to bone. Our results for the first time suggest that abrogation of osteomimic phenotype in ovarian cancer cells might occur during drug resistance acquiring. Our research points out the direction for further functional research. We should be aware that both osteogenesis and drug resistance development are covered by a natural selection. Therefore, the hijacking of genes with the prominent roles in physiological functions and next exploiting them during neoplastic transformation is the successful strategy commonly employed by cancer cells. The understanding and evolutionary logic of this phenomenon is essential. Our cellular model was patented and will be available soon to the worldwide scientific community in the International Cell Culture Collection. If you need more information, please visit the website of Ximbio Company. I would like to thank my colleagues for excellent collaboration. Agnieszka Synowiec from Military Institute of Medicine, Luisa Hanczu, Aleksandra Świercz and Michał Guralski from Institute of Bioorganic Chemistry in Poznań and Alicja szabelska berensewicz Joanna Cypryk-Walczak and Idzi Siatkowski from Poznań University of Life Science. Thank you for your attention and I would like to invite you to discussion.